Right, so on to some organic chemistry now. Uh, so, the organic compounds labelled A to E are all produced by living organisms. Hmm, interesting. Uh, give the systematic name of A. Okay, so here we go. Um, what have we got for A? Um, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven carbons. Um, so it's going to be heptan. Um, you've got an OH group, an alkyl group coming off the third carbon, so heptan triol, and a methyl group coming off that one, uh, the fourth carbon, so four methyl heptan triol. Okay, now it tells me the compound D reacts with hydrogen chloride in an addition reaction to produce two products. One product is formed in much greater amounts than the other. Draw the structure of both possible addition products. Okay, so um, you can, you've got your double bond here, so you could have H there, Cl there, or Cl there and H there. So the main thing is, is do the main structure first, but we're just not going to put, I'm not going to put my double bond in because that has been added across like so. And then in, I could add my H there and my Cl there, or I could add my Cl there and my H there, like so. Right, so it wants me to say which will be the greater product. Well, this one's gonna be the greater product, because if we go back to the original structure, like so. Remember the hydrogen adds to the carbon which already has the most hydrogen on. This carbon hasn't got any hydrogen on at all. This carbon is bonded by a double bond to that, carbon there and a carbon there. So that's a tertiary, uh, well actually quaternary one for that. Yeah? Um, no hydrogen's on there at all. Whereas this one has got one hydrogen coming off there. So the hydrogen adds to the carbon with the most hydrogen. And the reason why is the stability of the carbocation produced. For this product, the intermediate carbocation produced is that one there, which is a tertiary carbocation. Um, because my hydrogen is in there, and then remember the Cl minus will be coming in to add there like so and that one is far more stable than the positive charge being on that one there so it's because of a more stable tertiary carbocation being formed right so this is a uh well theoretical yield problem i guess slightly more difficult uh so i've got 4.125 grams of compound d reacting with an excess of hydrogen chloride so i don't need to worry about the mass of that i've got loads of it uh, the mixture contains 5% of one, uh, sorry, 5 of one product, 95% of the other product, calculating the mass of each product form. So the first one I need to find how much of my addition product am I allowed to make. So moles of D is the mass divided by the molar mass, which gives me that number of moles. The molar mass of my product is 146.5. So my expected mass is the number of moles times my molar mass, which gives me 5.494 grams. Then I just take 95% of that, which gives me 5.22 grams. 5% of it gives me 0 0.27 grams. Um, and that's pretty much how you do it. Okay, so um, it's then analyzed one of the compounds, A to E, and it wants to be to identify which one. So percentage composition by mass, they give me carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So I work out that divide by the relative type mass for each to give me this, then divide by the smallest one, which is the oxygen, so that comes to 1, that comes to 16, and then that comes to 10. So I'm looking for a compound with 10 carbons, 16 hydrogens, and 1 oxygen. So the only one that works out when you look at the other ones is actually C. Okay, so that's that done. But you do need to use the IR. So let's just make sure we've got the IR. What does this massive ball band show? Well, that's showing me I've got an OH group. So based just on the IR, it could be A or C, because both of them have an OH group. However, looking at this with my formula, I know it's going to be C.
Uh, so this is a bit of an odd question because there's loads of information which I'm not really sure why I need it. Anyway, um, so if you read through it, then it says the reaction between uh, sodium chloride one and HCl produces sodium chloride as well as chlorine. Suggest a reaction for this. Well, um, okay. So you need to know the formula of sodium chlorate is going to be NaClO. Why is that? Well, chlorate is ClO and it's chlorate 1. So the oxidation state of chlorine is going to be 1. So you only need 1 O, which is minus 2. And then you've got ClO minus, and then you need Na, just 1 Na plus. Um, you then need to add dilute HCl, HCl. It tells you one of the products is chlorine. The other product is HCl. Um, what have you got left over? Well, you've got to account for that oxygen somehow. Um, you know, oh, have I missed something out? Oh, no, made a mistake there. It's actually NaCl, so let's change that. Um, so that just goes through, don't need the question. So actually formed chlorine, uh, NaCl, and what else do I need to count for? I need to account for the hydrogen and I need to account for the oxygen, which likely to be water. And then to balance that all up, I think I'm going to need 2HCl there. Um, does that all work out? Two hydrogen, two hydrogen, one sodium, yep, 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 that looks good. So this one's an old favourite outline, a simple practical test that I can test, that you could use for chloride ions. Okay, chloride ions again, you've known this since GCSE, silver nitrate solution, so you add Ag, NO3, aqueous, and you will see a white precipitate of silver chloride. Um, and then what apparatus do I use to separate two liquid layers? You use a separating funnel for that. Um, uh, hopefully you've seen one, if not, um, have a look on uh, Google or something like that. It's like a big flask, like so, and then it's actually symmetrical rather than just like a dog. You've got a tap at the bottom there, then you've got your two liquid layers like so, and then this drops out there. But you can see that it goes nearer, 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 and so you can see when this drops out and stop the tap, and then you've separated those two liquids like so. The reaction between hexane and chlorine took place when a bright light was switched on. So whenever you think bright light, something like that, always think free radical substitution. Let's give the skeletal formula one possible organic product. So it's hexane. So I need six carbons: one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. Um, and remember, you can replace any hydrogen with a chlorine. So why does this give a mixture of products? Well, it's because any hydrogen atom could be replaced by chlorine. There's no, no control really for this. You can also get disubstituted products. So you may have another chlorine add across, uh, tri-substituted products, a whole, a whole mess of things you get. Right, nearing the end then, final question. You'll be delighted to hear. Um, you've got... Ethene reacting with steam to produce ethanol. Um, carried out at 300 degrees C, 6,000 kilopascals. Catalysts that we use, we usually use hydro, uh, phosphoric acid for that, H3PO4. Use your catalyst for that. How does a catalyst increase the rate of reaction? Well, it allows the reaction to proceed at lower uh, rate, uh, a lower activation energy. So if you remember, you can do this. Um, on your reactant profile. You've got your reactants and your products there, and you've got your activation energy there, Ea, and then um, your Ea with a catalyst, it's a lower bump, and so you've got Ea catalyst in red there, which is lower. So it lowers the activation energy for a reaction by providing an alternative route, um, and therefore more molecules have enough energy for a successful collision. Oh, right, so this is a bit of a common sense one in a way. Um, it wants me, so it's saying a lot of the time we're now using, uh, we're getting glucose, we're getting uh, ethanol from uh, fermentation of glucose. Um, and they give me the equation here. 
and it wants me to compare this reaction to the one that we just looked at. So we need to look at atom economy, raw materials, and also reaction conditions. Uh, okay, so let's have a look. Atom economy. First of all, if you look at the atom economy of this one, the first one that we looked at up here, this has got an atom economy of 100%. That only makes one product that we want. So that's got to be good. Atom economy, well, hey, good, good start for that one. However, and this is important to then note, it comes from ethene. I have to use ethene, which comes from crude oil, and crude oil, crude oil is a non-renewable resource, so eventually it will run out. However, glucose comes from plants, which is renewable. So based on that, the glucose is winning. And so when you look at long-term stability, it's got to be fermentation because eventually ethene's gonna run out if we just get it from crude oil. Um, the other thing that you may want to mention is that although um, carbon dioxide is produced in this reaction, which isn't good because it's a greenhouse gas, that gas is reabsorbed anyway by plants making glucose. Uh, so that doesn't matter. And that concludes the first paper.